My next guest, you know who he is. He's going to be fighting for some hardware coming up here on September 12th. The vacant bantamweight title against Patchy Mix at Bellator 246. It is Juan Archuleta back here on the program. Juan, how's it going, man? What's up, dude? Good. I uh, just got done working out, uh, getting ready for eat breakfast and get the day started. Yes, it seems like you're always working out. Uh, you got those garage sure. workouts you do with you know TJ Dillashaw and the rest of your team. Uh, you've been putting in the work. We've been seeing it. But first off, man, congratulations! Uh, big opportunity here, like I mentioned for the for the title. Uh, when was this actually like put pen to paper? Because I know there was rumblings about this fight basically after the Corrales fight. Yeah, that's pretty much when it started. Uh, well, actually, I was planning on uh, being the alternate for the tournament, and then uh, after that the pandemic hit and then um you know because there were some injuries going on in the tournament and they said you know just be ready to fight uh be the alternate and then when i learned the pandemic hit we weren't gonna fight for a while and i said well you know it doesn't it seems like everyone's gonna get healed up so might as well drop down and uh you know fight for the title and they said all right well let's do it if you can make the weight we'll put you on the first show and i said all right let's do it and then uh ended up catching covid uh got a setback and then um so now, here we are a couple months later, ready to go. Well, sorry to hear that. I didn't know you got COVID. Now, was that, um, were you asymptomatic or did you actually have symptoms? Yeah, I had full on like every symptom you could possibly think of besides, you know, it coming out of both ends. But um, uh, as, as far as that, like head cold, um, you know, chest pain, uh, body aches, body fevers, um, uh, you know, swollen throat, uh, pretty much everything, you know, like I said, besides throwing up and all that other stuff. So yeah, it was, it was horrible. How long were you up for? Like when were you able to get back to training after that happened? Well, I was able, uh, thanks to our O2 health lab and the training lab, um, you know, they're top of the line when it comes to science, they had a doctor, uh, Dr. Bennett, um, that we had reached out to that had an antibiotic for the, uh, uh, that he found with success uh, to treat COVID uh, and to prevent COVID. So um, since then, been taking the medication and the antibiotic and stayed on it um, just to ensure the safety of my family and the safety of myself. Yeah, and uh, obviously, uh, yeah, good good to hear that you're, you're healthy and everything like that. I know you guys kind of train in like a tight-knit group, so uh, don't want anyone yeah. getting sick or anything like that, which is important. Now, one thing I learned yesterday when I spoke with Patchy was that you guys actually trained together in the past. What do you remember from that? Because he sort of described it as, you know, he was a young kid. He, he really looked up to you, and now you guys are fighting each other. What do you remember about you guys training together? Yeah, we were uh, down uh, helping. I was helping, actually, uh, Cub Swanson get ready for a fight. Uh, I forgot what fight it was, it was so long ago. Um but, you know, after the after the practice, Patrick was like, hey, man, can we roll? I fight for King of the Cage. I said, yeah, for sure. I'm willing to work out with anyone. So we rolled. Uh, you know, he gave me some advice, gave him some advice. And then um, from then on, you know, he became great and King of the Cage and did everything he needed to do to take the next step in his uh, career as, as well as I. And um, here we are, you know, ready to collapse. You know, that's how MMA is. You could train with one person one day and end up fighting for a world title on the next. Yeah, and he's had a great run in Bellator. I know it hasn't been too many fights, but a lot of finishes in his career. His ground game just seems to be on another level. Uh, how do you look at this fight? Is it just, you know, sort of striker versus grappler? I mean, you're pretty well-rounded no matter where the fight goes, but how do you look at this from a style perspective? Yeah, I mean, I don't see him being well-rounded. I just see him as, uh, you know, his strong suit being uh, uh, a jiu-jitsu player. And so, you know, uh, I'm a well-rounded MMA athlete. I've pro proven it time and time again. I could take the fight wherever it goes, and, you know, I could have success wherever it goes. So, you know, when you can't take me down and you can't get the submission, we're going to see, uh, expose him and see where um, his, his uh, difficulties are in MMA and where he lacks in, um, in techn technicality of stand-up, wrestling, grappling, cage work, you know, whatever it is, we're going to find it and we're going to expose it. Now, training camp, correct me if I'm wrong here. I think I've got the training partners down. Raymond Daniels, TJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson. Anyone else I'm missing in there? Those are some of the main guys. I know Syed Awad as well. Yeah, I mean, the list goes on, you know, it goes on to Brian Ortega, it goes to Georgie Caracanian, um, you know, Chito Vera, uh, Felipe Delmonica, uh, Tim Elliott, you know, just a list of guys that I've, I've constantly trained with um, that have, you know, molded me to who I am and, uh, you know, always challenging practices. You get, you get beat up in some of the practices, you get the best in some of the practices, you get humbled, you get uh, confidence, so you know, it's, it's the sport of MMA. That's what makes you who you are. And it sounds like everyone's adapted. Well, one of the things I love about your team, the egos are at the door. You guys are there for each other. It's not like I'm going to outdo the other guy. I imagine everyone that's been joining and you know, your workouts and everything in the training has sort of had that philosophy because that's how it's been working over the last couple of years. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, we're growing and uh, we're continuing to have great success. We continue to bring young talent in and uh, and and uh, evolve. You know, if you're not if you're staying stagnant and keeping the same workout partners, that's when you don't evolve in MMA. So we've been bringing in wrestlers and uh, keeping up with wrestling like Joey McKenna, Frank Pirelli, you know, some of the young uh, guys uh, leaving high school, uh, Aaron Nagao and just, you know, all around athletes and uh, guys who do jiu-jitsu uh big jiu-jitsu players mikey michael musumini and like just you know a lot of uh gracie baja guys and constantly just finding new new training partners to evolve now did ortega join your team officially or is he just cross training with you guys um we it's kind of weird we don't really necessarily have a team we just you know find a group of buddies and we all train together uh, you know i know we, he has the same management as me and um you know it's just we have an open door policy. Whoever wants to come train and, uh, you know, have no ego and, uh, not make it about them. You know, that's, that's how, how we train at this point. You know, uh, someone flies in, they're like, Hey, can we train with you guys? The door's open. We, we let people, uh, train with us. Cause that's how we get better. Excellent. Uh, you're still managed by Tiki, right? Yeah. Tiki goes in. Got, yeah. Gotcha. Just, uh, obviously got to mention him cause he got Dominic Reyes, that big uh, title fight again. So I got to give him credit for that. That's uh, pretty awesome to see. Uh, the yeah. other guy I mentioned there, TJ Dillashaw, I know he's uh, supposed to, I think come back next year. Uh, how's he feeling? Cause he's, he's, he's very close to coming back and the bantamweight division has never been hotter than ever. Yeah. I mean, he had, you know, uh, going back to some of his fights before, uh, he got suspended, you know, he, uh, he was dealing with two strenuous, uh, shoulder injuries that are, every other practice his shoulders were popping out and uh so you know he took he was it was actually a blessing in disguise he got to be able to you know get the surgery in both shoulders repair both shoulders and at this point on now it's getting in shape and uh getting his timing back uh you know getting back getting his feet wet again and then by the time january february march hits he'll be uh ready to go How's the weight cut going? I got to ask, because I know it's been a couple fights now since you've dropped back down to 135. Uh, how, how's everything going? I mean, you're, you're obviously working out every day, so I'm sure the pounds are just sweating off in that California heat. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I was actually doing the opposite. Uh, you know, before I started the weight cut, I was actually working with Josh Rosen, just putting on muscle and uh, rebuilding because we figured, well, we're not going to fight for a while, so might as well rebuild the body and rebuild the muscle. And uh, I was up to like 185. And then in like uh, March, I, I think we were like, hey, uh, seems like everyone's going to be healed up. Let's just cut down. So we started making the cut for July. And then, uh, you know, it was a little strenuous at first. It was hard to turn the body back over into like uh, pretty much a triathlete. But uh, at this point now, I'm the lightest I've ever been cutting down to 135. I'm the strongest I've, I've ever been in my career, uh, you know, throwing a lot of weight around and, uh, you know, feeling great, uh, ready to go. This is going to be the best perform, uh, best feeling performance I'm, I've had stepping into the cage. How much do you think strength will play into this? Because you fought at 45. I think Patchy's actually fought at 125 before. So do you feel like that will be a difference in the fight? Um, I, I think he's strong. You know, I'm not going to take it away from him. I'm going to have the best Patchy mix out there. And, uh, you know, that's why I fight these guys. I, like, stepping up fighting Pitbull, stepping up and fighting Bendejas. I fight people at their best. I don't I don't run from their challenges, you know. Like, uh, he's on a 14 or, you know, third, whatever, 24 fight win streak, whatever it is, you know, with his amateur record but uh there's no excuses for him you know going out there and uh if he says this and that's like you know i <laughs> i beat you at your best you know you can say whatever you want pitbull beat me at my best you know there are some things that happen but he beat me at my best you know and so that's why i take these challenges i go out there i tell uh the promoter i want to i want to fight the best guy on the best winning streak that way there's no excuse and uh that's what we did for this fight going into it uh you know knowing that he has great momentum He's beating some guys that, you know, uh, have good names, you know, like basically Ricky Bendejas when I fought, fought him. He was at his prime. He came off a big win, and I, I came in there, fought him, and then he had a list full of excuses after the fight. And it's like, whatever, dude, you came off a good win. Like, I can make my excuses on why it was so close, but I still won. And you had to refigure out your life after the fight. You moved. You changed your whole whole lifestyle and your whole family's uh, moved from where your family is and cha changed your family's lifestyle because of a loss. And, you know, I took his momentum. So people didn't see that when Patchy fought him. He was lost and confused and uh, going into that fight in Madison Square Garden. And uh, he didn't have the best Ben Dejas like I did. So that's, you know, there, it's not taking anything away from Patchy's performance. But, you know, it's different when, when you come off a loss and you have to – you have to fight a guy that has no momentum compared to a guy that has, that has full confidence and belief in him. That's why I love this fight uh, coming up. 
And you brought up the Pitbull fight. That was last year, and that was a five-round fight uh, in terms of a title fight. I know Patchy's had some title fights in the regional scene, but how much of an advantage is that that you've already fought for a title already and you sort of know what to expect when you go in the cage? Um, I think with no crowd, it's going to not make a difference. You know, it, it's not going to be like um, the electric atmosphere that I had uh, fighting Pitbull and, like, you know, a lot on the line and a lot at stake. You know, I think he's going to be able to come into his own just like I'm going to and be able to hear his coaching and just run through and let muscle memory take over without hearing boos or, you know, hearing cheers or, you know, uh, so that plays a huge factor. So I think for this fight, you know, it's going to be, you know, a very technical fight and, uh, you know, whoever has the best cardio is going to win. Who's going to be in your corner for this fight? And the reason I asked is because I was at your fight against Pitbull and I was a few feet away from TJ Dillashaw and I, he was not screaming the entire fight. Like he kept telling you, you know, giving you advice and stuff like that. Like he's really into it. So is he going to be in your corner for this fight? Yeah. You know, we cleared it up. Like I thought I cleared it up with California when we fought out here. And then last second, unprofessionally, they cut him. you know, so, saw that, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, so this one, I called the commission, had a long talk with them, said, listen, is TJ Dillashaw cleared to fight uh, or to corner me in my fight? And he said, yeah, why wouldn't he be? And I said, well, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I'm, a, I'm asking you. And I said, he's been suspended. He was suspended by USADA, suspended by New York, and he was on suspension. Is he allowed yes or no to corner me? And they said, yes. So from this point on, if, if they try to pull him or pull anyone from my corner, I'm just going to walk out and say, when you, when you figure it out, let me know this. I ain't going to play any games this time. Uh, you know, so, uh, I got TJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson, and then I need my manager, Tiki Gosen, there because if anything goes south, you know, I need him to put him on it. Yeah. You know, put yeah. a smack down, down. But uh, he's actually been helping me a lot, Tiki. Uh, I spent some great time with him because uh, he's fought before, too. You know, he's been in the UFC. Was, oh, yeah. I remember uh, all of his fights. Yeah. yeah. So he's been helping me a lot with my, you know, stand up and working in, uh, you know, just. Uh, evolving me as a fighter so I've, I've been thankful for that and been you know super excited to showcase my skill how's this fight playing out on september 12th 25 minutes of just you know long drawn out just uh big brothering uh apache uh, mix you know gonna go out there and put it on them just show them that the di different calibers of levels of fighting the, the you know different momentums you know what it's like fighting the a plus fighter and uh gonna go in there and and you know, just keep constantly pushing the pace until the bell's over, the match is over, and whether he don't answer a bell or whether, you know, a knockout happens, it happens. But I'm looking to go in there for 25 minutes of war. And, uh, you know, he's hoping to go in there and end it fast, which is awesome because he's going to lack the confidence as the fight goes on. You know, I've been doing interviews for, for a couple of years now, and I don't know if most people realize you were sort of known on the regional scene as the belt collector. I mean, any weight class, it wouldn't matter. 155, I mean, it doesn't matter. You fought everywhere, right? Uh, what would it mean to finally get that Bellator title? Because you've had a pretty crazy career uh, in terms of who you fought and what weight class and everything. What would that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, his destiny is, is bound to happen. You know, I've seen it over and over in, in my practices and my in my mind and my visions and my sleep. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just, you know, you, you go out there and you're going to take what you've earned. You know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go take what I've earned and uh, what I've set forth to do and be an inspiration of those that have had the same background as me and the struggling background as me and, and show them that champions do uh, champions and dreams come true when you put hard work into it. Kind of going off, uh, you know, out, out of fighting for a second. Uh, I know someone you're really good friends with is uh, is Kendra Lust, and uh, you know, I spoke to Kendra not that long ago. She's got that podcast with Julian Marquez. Uh, I know you guys have trained together a bunch of times. How cool is it seeing her sort of enter the MMA space, not only with training but also she's got this podcast going. She's uh, coming into our industry now. Yeah, you know, something that she's been a huge fan of, and that's how you know we met. It was just through an acquaintance that, um, you know, uh, it was my videographer that, uh, had introduced me, uh, to her. And, um, uh, you know, from then we hit it off and, you know, she, I introduced her to my family and, uh, you know, she just, uh, supported me from day one. So from the moment we met, she understood like, I'm not no, some crazy, uh, psycho MMA fighter. I was just there educating her about MMA and what we do and my lifestyle. And um, it was similar for her. You know, she's not some crazy just porn uh, adult um, actress. She's she's, you know, human just like everyone else. So, you know, we hit it off really well and um, just found friendship through, you know, similar characters. And then uh, from then on, she's been very supportive and uh, introduced her a, a lot to the MMA um a lot of my MMA teammates and the industry and, and things like that. And, and, and it's, 
been a way that she could, uh, you know, start to work a, a different route in her life, which is awesome to see. Yeah. And there's a lot of similarities between the in- industries too. If you look at, you know, pay and all this other stuff, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, crossovers there. So that podcast, by the way, beauty and the beast, if you guys haven't seen it really good job there with Julian Marquez, uh, before we go, uh, you're always doing cool stuff. I saw on your Instagram, you're shooting arrows now. What, what's that all about? That's so cool. Where you're doing the, like the, like an archery ar- archer or whatever. You yeah. Call it. So, um, you know, we, I, I eat, uh, you know, my, my diet contains a lot of game meat. Uh, so it's, you know, Buffalo elk deer, uh, you know, just clean, clean eating. And so this year I drew an elk tag, um, and it was supposed to be from <laughs> September 3rd to the September 18th. And uh, so, you know, this fight kind of cuts into the hunt, but I was like, well, you know, it is what it is. But um, right now, uh, I've been practicing with that because right after the fight, I fly down to Arizona in the Apache Territory and uh, and going to go get me an elk because uh, I got an elk tag. So been practicing and you know showcasing some of my skills uh with the with a with the bow so it's been fun you know it's, it's a stress reliever it takes your mind off fighting and still kind of have the same mentality are you gonna film you going hunting you think because i think that would be cool to like see like you know kind of like what they did with joe rogan when he went hunting yeah yeah uh probably you know <laughs> um a lot of people are like you need more content i'm like okay Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so that's probably one of the contents that I'll be doing. You know, if that doesn't go through, because right now with the COVID situation, I'll probably yeah, end up going tough. to go go up to Alaska. So e- either or, you know, because the day after is my birthday, so I've been looking to kind of do something for myself. So, um, you know, either going up to Alaska or out to Arizona on the Patsy Reservation and just hanging out, doing some sweat lodges and uh, doing some elk hunts. It's going to be fun. And when the border opens up, you got to come up here to Canada. we got some great hunting up here. I know. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm not welcome up there. I got a felony. So uh, oh, when really? I was in, oh, uh, when I was in that's, college, that's too bad. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I can, but I mean, if I can, yeah, I would love to. But uh, yeah, so you know, that, that that's something I'd love to do. I got to talk to the government up there. Yeah, put in a good word to Trudeau up here. We'll see yeah. what happens. Heck I want yeah. really appreciate the time, man. I, I know you got to get back to working out. Uh, anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media you want to plug? The floor is yours. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to give a huge shout out to just everyone that's been supporting us uh, since day one. Legacy Builders and uh, Flavor Republic owned by Steve Martin. Uh, the guy's been a huge help for me, helping hand and a believer since day one. Uh, my coaching staff, uh, you know, my trainer, Sam Calavita, has been sticking with me the last seven months, getting me ready and fine tuning uh, uh, for this fight to make down to 135 and make some history again. So, uh, you know, a shout out to O2 Health Lab and uh, those guys keeping me recovered and uh, Dr. Ben for helping me get COVID free and uh, keeping me clean and helping protect my family. Um, you know, Monster Energy, Hans Camp, and all those guys. Thank you guys. And uh, definitely want to give your fans a shout out for listening and uh, tuning in to what we have to say. You guys are awesome. Thanks for giving us a platform to, you know, show us who we are as characters and not uh, um, and getting our personalities out there and getting the fight out there. September 12th, you can catch me on Paramount or DAZN, uh, whatever app you have or TV you have. Um, tune in because you're going to see a great performance, 25 minutes of just pain.